Hey, what's going on? Ryan here with Intersection Records, and we're reviewing the first night of the Crossroads Guitar Festival uh, in Los Angeles. They played at the Crypto.com Arena, which is formerly known as the Staples Center in downtown Los Angeles. And it was pretty darn awesome. I'm going tonight. We'll do a review tomorrow on day two. The show opens up. First of all, there was guitars uh, in this outdoor courtyard for sale. Uh, Gibson had a booth, Paul Reed Smith, Fender. I didn't mill around that too much. Let's get into the music. That's what we're here for. Sonny Landreth band opened up. You know, I've seen Sonny Landreth at the 2010 Crossroads Guitar Festival, and nobody plays guitar like Sonny Landreth. He just has a kind of a claw style with a th thumb pick. It's it's rocking, it's bluesy, it's swampy. Uh, Clapton came out for two songs. They did uh, w Working Blues. Uh, Del McCurry uh, played next. I had never seen his band. Uh, man, you talk about some just straight bluegrass talent. Um, that was one of the highlights of the night for me to see him. But then Sierra Hall came out on, on mandolin. She's pretty and very good. Jerry Douglas came on on Dobro. Um, Sierra Hall played on a Doc Watson song. Uh, Bradley Walker came out. He's in a wheelchair. He, he sings uh, beautifully. They did a Merle Haggard song. Uh, today, I, I uh, start loving you again. Um, Clapton then comes out for, um, they did a gospel song called I'll, I'll Fly Away. Clapton comes out for a, a, a duet on uh, Always On My Mind. Uh, just beautiful, you know, as a little tribute to Willie Nelson, I guess. Um, again, this Bradley Walker's got this classic George Jones voice. Brothers Landeth were next, and Beatles kind of meet Motown, kind of meet little modern rock, pop, harmonies. They all sing. Uh, really liked Brothers Landreth. Jeff uh, Bullard kind of set up on a side stage, did acoustic uh, it was nice uh, th two or three songs that was followed by the way the stage is revolving so that you're never not without music there's a stage that being set up in the back and one in the front uh, and when they're not doing that there's somebody on the side doing a little solo piece so Albert Lee's band came out just a tight band just incredibly tight band uh, Peter Asher came out and did his signature song world without love just really cool Judith Hill, another singer I didn't know of, um, funky um, female singer, um, powerful vocals. Uh, she's from LA, she plays an SG, Black Gibson SG. Eric Gales came out and jammed with her. Eric Gales in a gold suit with gold shoes. Ariel Posen hit the side stage next for a very short set, one song I believe. That was nice. Eric Gale's band then comes out, just monstrous tone. You know, he was kind of the showstopper for the first half of the show. Uh, Samantha Fish came out, beautiful guitar player. Again, she's playing an SG, a white SG. Boy, she's fun to look at and she's fun to hear. I put a spell on you um, with Kingfish uh, Ingram on guitar. I'd never seen him before either. Fantastic player, lots of passion and a big time jam with, with Samantha Fish, Kingfish, and Eric Gales. Next up, we had Joe Bonamassa. I saw Bonamassa with Black Country Communion. I've seen him at uh, one, one other time at the Crossroads in 2010. He's got a blue suit on. He's got his um, onslaught of classic guitars. Um, opened up with an old like 61 SG. Uh, then went to uh, an old Blackguard Fender Telecaster, then, then one of his Les Pauls. Uh, I feel like Breaking Up Somebody's Home Tonight was an Ann People song that he did with John McLaughlin on guitar. So John McLaughlin wasn't scheduled to be there today. He came out and jammed. But really, because we ended with Lovers, Joe Bonamassa said the real JB is Jeff Beck, and because we ended as lovers uh, off his wired out, uh, excuse me, off his blow by blow album, that may have been one of the best moments of the night. Trading licks, Bonamassa, trading licks with John McLaughlin. Uh, and then we had Eric Gales come back out, 
and McLaughlin, Bonamassa, and Gales uh, did a spin on a uh, on an Albert King song. Taj Mahal's next again. Immediately following this, Taj Mahal sitting in a chair and he does "Ain't Nobody's Business." Sounded great. Uh, the crowd really responded. The crowd here in LA was was good. Um, you know, it was a long night of music. It was a pretty mellow night. Uh, this first night, Cheryl Crow, excuse me, J Jimmy Vaughn comes out and does Texas Flood with Gary Clark Jr. guesting on that. You know, Jimmy's always good. Uh, Clapton then comes out and they do Sweet Home Alabama, dedicated to Buddy Guy, who was supposed to be at Crossroads but was not able to make it. Um, Cheryl Crow acoustic, you know, she's there with a capo on and, and, and talk, telling stories a little bit, running through some chord progressions. And this, this is a very cool version of Every Day is a Winding Road. You know, her vocals, she's hitting these notes. She, she's hitting notes that she doesn't have to hit, but she can, and she does, and they're perfect. And she sounds great, she looks great. Uh, by the way, Bill Murray was the MC of the whole night, kind of saying jokes and things. He gave Cheryl Crow a hug and I don't know if Bill Murray is just really tall or Cheryl Crow is tiny, but I think a little bit of both. Uh, in fact, he also stood up next to Gary Clark Jr. and Gary Clark is uh, very tall, taller than Bill Murray. Um, War on Drugs was next. War on Drugs. And I knew Jacob Dylan was going to play earlier, later in the night, but War on Drugs, this singer sounds like Dylan in the 70s. How Dylan would want to be... Ah, I, I was not familiar with this band. I was blown away by them. In fact, they may have been the best of the whole night. War on Drugs, this this singer, guitar player, has unique style without overplaying. Um, I was blown away by, by War on Drugs. They played a song called Under the Pressure uh, and a couple other ones that I have to find out what they were. I'm not sure exactly yet what they were. I wish I could tell you. Um, Gary... Uh, Clark Jr. then took out his uh, Gibson hollow body guitar and did, an, a, a, did, did a, a solo song uh, that was really cool. Uh, then we have the Wallflowers uh, doing 10th Avenue Freeze Out, excuse me, uh, <laughs> 6th Avenue Heartache and One Headlight. Yeah, Jacob Dylan, I had seen them in 25 years. He looks great in great shape, and his band is very good. They also did, then did The Waiting by uh, Tom Petty. It's like a little nice Tom Petty tribute. Then out walks Roger McGuinn with his Rickenbacker. And there's some feedback, unfortunately, on the Rickenbacker and on his vocals at the beginning. But they do turn, turn, turn which was really cool to see just you know electric band i had seen mcguinn before but not with an electric rock band then so you want to be a rock and roll star and then clapton comes out and they do eight miles high <laughs> and uh you know mcguinn and, and clapton trading licks uh wallflowers are, are still backing this whole thing mcguinn leaves enter stephen stills for Buffalo Springfield's Bluebird. Uh, you know, it was pretty incredible to see, even though Stills didn't seem as prepared as some of the guys. Um, you know, his voice is kind of rough, and I felt like the band maybe needed to rehearse that a little bit more. And then they did Questions uh, with Eric Clapton joining um, on Bluebird and on Questions. So Clapton stayed out for eight miles high. Bluebird and Questions. Um, John Mayer Trio was up next, and I I had to actually leave. I, I did not see John Mayer Trio or ZZ Top, but that's okay. I'm going back tonight. I was there for six and a half hours. We had been out the night before, and uh, I had a long ride back up to Malibu. So peace out. Check out my channel. We'll talk at least one more time uh, about this show about tonight's show tomorrow if not other shows today check out my channel peace out see ya